What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another World Cup 2022 fantasy video and in this one it's going to be my first draft. So I'm going to run you through how the team is looking, which players might get changed or upgraded as we go, why I've made certain picks and all that good stuff. So if you enjoyed the video make sure to give it a like and if you haven't done so already hit that subscribe button as there's plenty of World Cup content to come. Obviously running up until the tournament starts but also during it as well. Now with this format of the game you do tend to have a stronger bench because of sub Institution changes so that for the likes of like Modric obviously a midfielder Richarlison a forward I'll talk about them when we get to those positions so let's talk about the goalkeepers and defense first of all so I've gone for Costa from Portugal playing Ghana in match day one I think he is the cheapest way into that Portugal defense and if we take a quick look um, at the groups it's not necessarily a really easy group for them they've got Ghana Uruguay and obviously uh, South Korea as well it's not going to be easy but I think that defense is pretty good and, and five million for a goalkeeper that plays for a team like Portugal feels a little bit too good to turn down now to be fair in my team I do have one million in the bank and I, I suspect if I keep the rest of the team the same like if I'm happy with my midfielders and forwards it probably is defense or goalkeepers where I'll use that money but I still think the five million is a bit of a bargain so that's why I've gone for him I've also gone for and I tell you right now I'm probably going to get some pronunciations wrong I'll try and work on that as we go through Roche I assume I think he's the uh, Uruguay goalkeeper for just four million that seems like a bit of a bargain as well now I don't know if he is absolutely guaranteed to be their number one but if I don't have enough money to upgrade because I use that million elsewhere I may just take the risk obviously we might get more information as we get towards the start of the tournament but unfortunately there's not many days to go like usually you'd have like a month off and they'd play some pre-season oh, it's not pre-season but pre-world cup friendlies and we're not necessarily going to see that for every team so that's a little bit of a worry um, but if you look at uh, if we go to Uruguay on the list here and then goalkeepers you got Muslera or Roche and now there's a million quid difference but some some people think that Roche is going to be the goalkeeper. So if you're an expert on Uruguay, let me know in the comments below if I've got that wrong. But if there is a chance he plays, 4 million again could be a bit of a buy. I know I'm kind of giving away the rest of the team there, but look, we'll just roll with it. Um, in defence, I've gone for double England defence because they're either going to play a back four where, okay, the fullbacks might not be quite as attacking, but they're still going to get forward, or they're going to play a wingback system. We know from Gareth Southgate, he is quite defensively minded, and even if they do line up with a back three, I'm sure it'll be Rice and Bellingham, but there's always a chance it could be Rice and Phillips as well, just given that kind of solidity. Now, I'm not necessarily massively confident with the England defensive, maybe Maguire plays, but he's always done okay for England. And I think with Iran, uh, Wales, and USA... I think England will. England are definitely favourites for that group, and I think they'll be favourites in most of those games to get a clean sheet. Now, there, it is a bit tricky to know exactly what's going to happen because with England, like having USA and Wales in that group, they're both going to want to get one over on England. Not just because you always want to win your games anyway. There's just a bit bit more to it in that game, so it does worry me slightly. But Trippier and Shaw are only five million. That's quite cheap, and Trippier should be on most set pieces. I. I don't have too many worries about their minutes. I think Shaw has got no competition on that left side. I think if something goes wrong with Shaw, it'll probably be Trippier that moves over there or Saka could play left wing back. Um, on the right-hand side, there is Trent, but I just don't think Gareth Southgate trusts him and I think he's only in the squad because Reese James is injured. So Trippier should get good minutes and I think England will be pretty good for clean sheets in most of those group games. And for 5 million, like I said, it's a pretty good price. Then you've got Pavard at France. He's also only 5 million, should play on that right side. If you want uh, like guaranteed players in that France defense, they're a little bit more expensive. And again, they are definitely going to be favorites for that group. It's not necessarily easy. Like if we have a quick look at the group, uh, against Denmark for example I do think they will provide some competition for France I think they beat them twice in the Nations League uh, kept a clean sheet in one of those games as well so that game won't be easy for France but the other two Australia and Tunisia they will definitely be favorites to get um, clean sheets in those games so I definitely want a French defender if I can one interesting thing to consider and I've not yet decided is when I use my wild card because if I'm going to use it in the group stages that might alter how my match day one team looks I almost a game week one their match day one because france are playing australia then they're playing denmark then they're playing tunisia so if i was going to wild card in match day three for example i would probably get fewer french players in my match day one squad 
because obviously Denmark in, in match day two is their toughest fixture. So that is something to consider. I, I'm I'm just torn about whether to use the wild card in match day, uh, sorry, in the group stages to kind of target those easier fixtures because this is the time when the the you know, there's more weaker teams, right? Obviously, because half of them are going to get knocked out before they go to round of 16. Or just to use it in the quarterfinals. Because if you make bets in the round of 16 with your unlimited transfers on teams that are going to go through, then they don't. Sometimes you can just find yourself with not enough transfers to make the changes you need for the quarterfinals. So that's when I'm going to use it. It's either in the group stage or the quarterfinals. Not yet decided, but I still want a French defender either way, I think, because I think they're going to be pretty solid in that group. And the last one I've gone for is Joachim Mela. For anyone that played Euro 2020 Fantasy, he was an absolute legend. He's only 4.5 million, very, very cheap. He scored five goals in World Cup qualifying. I think in the Nations League, he got three assists as well. They usually play with a back three, and if they do, he'll be a wing back, very attacking. If not, he should be their left back in the back four i don't expect him to miss hardly any minutes 4.5 million is a bargain and i think denmark are a stronger team than maybe some people give them credit for it doesn't just because he's 4.5 million and Shaw and trippier are both cheap doesn't mean you have to go cheap i've seen a lot of people like the six million uh, defenders like van dyke cancelo they're all really good picks but i've just spent a little bit more money in my attack i might alter that as we go but that's how the team is looking and the last one for the bench for a defender is Sosa at Croatia. He's only 3.5 million. Should play left back. I think he's got eight assists in the league so far for Stuttgart. Um, and he just looks like a bit of a bargain. Should play 3.5 million. Enables the rest of the team. So before we get into the next part of the video, I wanted to talk about today's sponsor, SoRare. Now you might not have noticed, but there is a massive tournament starting on Sunday and SoRare are running the Global Cup, which will go alongside that, completely free to play fantasy football with some awesome prizes up for grabs, which you can see on screen, such as meeting and playing football with Zinedine Zidane. And if you use that link in the description below to sign up and join my mini league, the top three will win signed jerseys as well. It's really easy to pick a squad. You've only got to choose eight players, two from each position, but importantly, only four five of those players will actually play for you in each round so for three of the positions as you'll see in a second I've gone for the cheapest player possible so in forwards I've gone for Benzema and Harry Kane right I had to have an English player in there my main midfielder is Kevin De Bruyne in defense I've gone for Dumfries who's very attacking in that wing back system for Holland and then for my goalkeeper I've gone for Manuel Neuer I've got one defender one goalkeeper and one midfielder that is as cheap as possible so when I choose my actual lineup you can see that I've picked one player from each position but then I get an extra pick as well which is of course going to be Harry Kane and that is it I just need to pick a captain for now I'm going to stick it on Harry Kane I might change it later it's as easy as that so what's cool about this game is the scoring system is much more advanced so for anyone that you play in each round they'll get a player score that'll be made up of a decisive score and that's the usual stuff like goals and assists and then there's an all-round score which shows their total contribution to the game so many more players are viable in this kind of format and you can see here on this table I won't go through absolutely everything but it shows you how many points each position position will get so goalkeepers defenders and midfielders for loads of different stuff so you can see here block cross outfielder block uh there's kind of possession one jewels lost jewels one so players are rewarded overall much better than in other fancy football games so if you haven't already signed up make sure you click that link in the description below there's some great prizes on offer and make sure to join my mini league so the top three will win a signed jersey and you can see if you can beat me all right, so let's take a look at the midfield. And I do think by the time we get to the match day one deadline, this will probably be the position where I make the most changes. And I'm thinking more downgrades than upgrades because I just want a bit more money to spend in the forward line, maybe in defense as well. I'm conscious about whether or not I've spent enough in defense. I think for the money that I have spent, I've made some really good picks. But there's lots of other good defenders in and around the 5.5, 6 million quid price point, And I might want a few of them as well. I could almost do with a few more defender spots, if I'm honest. But anyway, let's talk about the midfielders that I have picked and you have to consider that some players roles and responsibilities and even performances sometimes are just better at international level than they are at club level and, Matt, and Ericsson has been brilliant at Man United do not get me wrong but he tends to sit a little bit deeper and he did score against Fulham almost got another one in the box as well so I'm not saying he never gets forward but I think he does it more often for Denmark I'd say he's probably their talisman and by the way if I get anything wrong in this video I'm not claiming to be an expert on every single team that is in the World Cup up. do leave me a comment below let me know what i got wrong uh, but i think ericsson for denmark is kind of a different beast set pieces penalties as well i believe so he's in for eight million and i do think in that group with france that denmark are definitely the second strongest team 
And I still think they could get something from France. Even if they lose the game, they can score. And there's no reason why Ericsson can't be a part of that. So I do like uh, him as a pick. I've also gone for Bergwijn. I know we didn't do fantastically well in the Premier League, let's say that. But at club level now, he's doing really well. He's scoring goals, assists for Netherlands as well. And he's only 7 million, right? And I think the only issue I found when I tried to make a few downgrades in midfield is it's hard to pick, like, like players that you know are going to score well. There's some that could do well, but I almost want kind of assured players in my team if I can. And obviously that's kind of the aim for fantasy anyway. And I think Bergwijn is one of them for 7 million. And even if I make other midfield changes, I feel like he will probably stay. Then I've got Modric on the bench. I'll come on to Sané and Musiala in a second for Germany. I've got Modric on the bench. I think Croatia, again, are probably... I'm just going to bring up their group here. So they are in group... Where is it? Uh, F. So they got Belgium, Canada and Morocco. I'm sure Belgium will be the favorites for that game but it's a bit like you know group d with france and denmark croatia are probably the second strongest team in that group i would say can definitely get something against canada and morocco and again it's i feel like modric is almost like ericsson when it comes to international level that he is just the man and he's obviously a brilliant player for real madrid etc and he has been for a very long time but they've got other superstars there it's a little bit different at international level he'll probably be on most set pieces i would assume and i think he's got penalties too and that is why he's in i think he's a pretty decent pick and then you've got the germany boys sane and musiala now germany I, I don't know who's the favorites in that group i think it's quite tough to call so they are in group E, and they've got Spain, Costa Rica, and Japan. Now, I think Germany and Spain are going to be the one and two in that group. I don't know which way around it will be. But I think the Germany team is is quite exciting, like players like Sané, Musiala. I don't know if Musiala is definitely nailed on, because I think he would play in that number 10 position behind Havertz, and they've still got Muller there as well, who feels like he has been around for absolutely ever and still going. So if we look at the uh, Germany picks, there are a few players in there that you could kind of look at in midfield. So Sané's a midfielder, Musiala is as well. Um, Royce, obviously, I think he's going to miss out, but they haven't updated the game yet. Gundogan could be an option at 7.52. I think he would be on penalties for Germany, so I haven't completely ruled him out. And obviously, points for tackles, key passes, means that Kimmich could be an option as well. Um, unfortunately, Gnabry has been listed as a forward, and I think it's difficult to fit him in at 9 million. Um, but I think overall, it's quite an exciting German team, which is why I've gone for two of them. And in the first game, they do play Germany. Japan now again a lot of this will come down to when I use the wild card because if I use it in the quarterfinals then the fact that Germany plays Spain in match day two doesn't worry me too much because I'm going to get them for match day three as well against Costa Rica so that's why I've gone for them I think Musiala is 8 million Sané is 9 million and I think they could just do pretty well for those price points not guaranteed and if I was going to wildcard in match day three, I would probably only have one of them because I wouldn't want them um, up against uh, who is Spain in game, uh, match, match day two. Get it right, match day two. But I do think they could be pretty good value in that midfield. So that's how it looks right now. Eriksen, Bergwijn, Sané, Musiala and Modric. Let me know below, do you think there are better midfielders that are cheaper prices than any of them? Because I really want to upgrade my other positions, especially in defence. All right, so adding in the forwards, my actual three forwards are Depay, Messi, and Richarlison. But I've also got Mbappe because I'm considering using my 12th man chip in match day one. Now, of course, I'd love a forward line that just has Messi and Mbappe and Neymar anyway. But given the budget that I've got, I've gone for two more value players in Depay and Richarlison, who I'll talk about in a minute. So then it comes down to who is going to be my one expensive forward. And I've gone for Messi. Now, one of the reasons that I've done that is just because of the group that they're in. So if you look at France's group in Group D and uh, Argentina's in Group C, I think Argentina will be the favourites to win all of those games. And I think overall, they're slightly easier maybe than the three games that France have to play just because of that Denmark game. Again, France will be the favourites to win all those games, but I think Denmark will put up a tougher fight than anyone in Group C. And I think obviously if they score, Messi is always going to be heavily involved. So I don't have to talk. I don't have to tell you how good Messi is, right? If we look at the forwards that we could go for, so Mbappe at eleven point five, Kane is eleven million. I don't think he is a bad shout. If I'm completely honest, I know I've got a little bit of English bias when it comes to picking their players. I've got the double up in defence, but I think I think England will score goals in all of those games. He's obviously the penalty taker as well. Benzema is the same price. You can get Neymar or Vinicius Junior for ten point five, and Messi is ten point five as well. I just think with their group, he is probably the one that I'm going to go for. 
Again, I do have that million in the bank, so I could upgrade him. But that's what I'm looking at right now. So it's it's I for the way the team is set up right now, it's either Messi or Mbappe. And I just think because Mbappe's got that Denmark game, and maybe I'm overplaying that match a little bit too much. Because they have that in match day two. I feel like I start with Messi and then maybe get Mbappe in later. But the 12th man booster, that allows me to have a player for one week only. And I do think, like, wildcard, I'm undecided about whether to use it in the groups or the quarterfinals. But with the 12th man chip and the power captain chip, I'll almost certainly use them in the group stages. Because that's when the you know, highest amount of weaker teams are in there. The more you get into the knockout stages, especially like the quarters and the semifinals, etc., for the most part, it will be the strongest teams left in. And so, you know, if Argentina play Brazil, you might think Argentina are favourites or, or, or vice versa. But the chances of there being like two, three, four goals is much lower. It can happen, of course, but it's much lower. So I will use it in the group stage. And I think getting Mbappe for Australia, but then not having him for that Denmark game could be the best way to play it. So that's why he's in. I've not 100% um, locked that in, but I think I probably will use 12th man and power captain in the groups. Uh, I've already talked about Messi. I mean, like I said, he kind of talks about himself. Like, no, sorry, he doesn't talk about himself, but you don't need me to talk about it, is what I'm trying to say. I really like Depay as a. I, I think I had him in Euro 2020 as well. I've already talked about you know, the Netherlands group. I think Bergwijn will do well. Again, Depay's always involved. I think he is the penalty taker and he always seems to be pretty good value. Uh, I believe he is, I'm just going to check now, I believe he's 8.5 million. So like Lukaku's 9.5, Muller's 9.5, uh, Vlahovic is 8.5, Rafinha is only 8.5 as well. If he was a midfielder, I'd have him in, but as a forward, it just, it's not quite as it's not quite as tempting. Maybe I, maybe I will upgrade Richarlison, but um, right now that's who I've got. And Depay is 8.5 million. So I think that's a pretty good price for someone with fairly decent fixtures. I think Netherlands can score in all of these games, Senegal, Ecuador, and Qatar. So for 8.5, he is in right now. And I've gone for Richarlison. Now, this one is not guaranteed to be in my team because he's not been... I was I wasn't... I, the fitness hasn't been great in the Premier League is what I'm trying to say recently. He's only just come back. He did have an injury. But recently for Brazil games, he has been favoured as the centre forward. And I believe if I put up uh, Brazilian forwards... You know, Neymar and Vinicius Junior, of course, they might be better picks, but they're 10.5 million. Richarlison's only 7.5. So if he is the main centre forward for Brazil, he's going to get goals. He's got a pretty good record as well. It's not guaranteed that he will play because obviously Jesus could play there if there was any injury worries. I'm sure even someone like Neymar could play there and they could, you know, they could change something else in the team to um, kind of get that to work. But in recent games, he has been favoured. I think he started six of eight qualifying games for the World Cup. So he is a pretty much a regular starter for Brazil. It just depends on that fitness thing and whether they might want to play Jesus or something else. But for 7.5 million, he's quite hard to turn down. So I think there's some pretty solid picks here. It now just starts the kind of refinement process about whether or not I make some downgrades, maybe in midfield, to put more money in attack, to not have Richarlison or put more money in defense but let me know in the comments below what you think of this team i will have more videos to come throughout this week for world cup content and obviously we'll, we'll revisit my team as we get closer to the deadline as well if you've enjoyed this video make sure to give it a like do hit that subscribe button if you haven't already loads of world cup content to come and obviously fantasy premier league content too which i normally do on this channel thanks very much for watching and i'll catch you again tomorrow